Hey everyone, this is Ryan McMillan from RyanMcMillan.com and today I wanted to talk to you about how to install a WordPress blog from scratch. Basically I want to take you from start to finish on how to install your very own WordPress blog. So we're going to take you through getting a hosting account, finding a domain name, downloading the WordPress software, uploading the WordPress software, and finally configuring it and uh, setting up uh, your blog. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we need to do is um, you're going to need a hosting account if you want to have your own WordPress blog. And I'm going to show you um, the uh, site that I recommend. Now the site that I recommend for hosting your own blog is called HostGator. And they're at HostGator.com here you can sign up for a hosting package and what you want to do is you want to click on web hosting and they have several different plans you can see hatchling 495 a month baby which is 795 a month and swamp which is 1295 a month now basically the difference between these three plans is the uh, amount of disk space they're going to give you the bandwidth and the domains allowed now if you're only going to have one site and it's just going to be this blog that you're going to set up this this hatchling plan is probably going to be just fine for you however if you're thinking about having two or more domains you're going to want the baby plan because because of this option right here they give you unlimited domains so that means you can have one two or a hundred sites with this plan all different domain names and it's only going to cost you 7.95 a month so that's up to you i just wanted to show you hostgator that's where i have uh, my sites hosted one more thing i wanted to show you before you sign up for hostgator though if you go to a, another website called hostgator codes this is one of mine um, you'll notice that I've posted um, some coupon codes that will save you some money. So basically, this this code right now will save you 20% off your order. Or if you wanted to get your first month of hosting for just a penny, these are some coupon codes you can put into uh, to HostGator and redeem them here, and it will save you some money. So I just wanted to uh, show you HostGatorCodes.com as well before you sign up for HostGator, so you can save save a few bucks. The second thing you're going to need is a domain name and where I get my domain names is as a place called name namecheap.com if I could spell it right namecheap.com and here it comes and basically what namecheap does is it allows you to buy your own, very own you know dot com or dot net or dot org domain so you're gonna wanna think about uh, what you wanna call your blog and uh, find an appropriate name. It's as simple as searching for for names. So if you wanted to call your uh, this is my very cool blog, and you want to get this is my very cool blog.com, you can search and see if it's available. And uh, lo and behold, it is. So if you wanted to uh, purchase that, you could. You add to cart, and uh, you basically go go through it. And that's about it as far as uh, registering the name. Now here's where we get into uh, the real meat of how to install your WordPress blog from scratch um, I just want to show you those two things because you kinda you they are prerequisites and you're gonna need to do those things um, that's getting uh, a hosting account and registering your domain name so let's get to it here the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna download WordPress and you get WordPress the latest version from www.word press.org and here's where you get it here's a link right here download WordPress 2.6.1 now this is the latest version I'm just gonna click on that scroll over here a little bit download WordPress 2.6.1 so I'm gonna download it let's pull it over here so you can see it I'm gonna save it right onto my desktop and there it goes it's all done close that and we'll minimize this now you'll see here we have our WordPress uh, zipped folder WordPress 2.6.1 zip now before we open that up I'm gonna get one more piece of software and it's called FileZilla and to find FileZilla uh, the easiest way I know how is just to go to Google FileZilla search for it right there there it is, filezilla-project.org for all of you that were wondering. Let's see. Download FileZilla Client. That's what you're looking for, the FileZilla Client. And I'm on a Windows machine right now. 
Um, so I'm going to download this one. If you're on Linux or Mac, you're going to want to get uh, the appropriate one. So I'm going to get FileZilla. And what FileZilla is, is it's an FTP client. What an FTP client does is it basically allows you to transfer files from your, from your computer up to your server. And your server is going to be uh, the one you get with your hosting account. And you'll receive all the information and stuff you need. Uh, if you sign up for HostGator, they'll give you an email that basically contains all of the information you're going to need to connect. So I've downloaded FileZilla now. And I'm going to install it on my computer. So I'm just going to, here it is, the setup for it. I'm just going to double click on that. I'm going to run it. I agree. Next. I like a little icon on my desktop, so I'll install that. Next. Next. Install. It's pretty simple to install. There's really nothing to, uh, nothing to it. It's done already. So we're going to say finish. And I'm gonna I'm just going to move this one out of the way because that was the actual setup and this is the program. And right now I'm gonna go back down to my WordPress.zip and I'm going to extract it. So I'm gonna right click on it and say extract all. Click on next. I'm just gonna extract it right to my desktop so I don't lose it. Extracting. There we go. Let's say finish. Here's my extracted uh, WordPress files. At this point, I'm just going to close this because I'm not quite ready for it. To create a database that WordPress can use. Now, we are going to do that by going to your web hosting control panel. Um, a lot of them call it cPanel. That's what HostGator calls it. So. I'm going to go to my site, findmyelmo.com, and where my cPanel is located is at the port 2082. Now yours might be different, but this is pretty pretty standard. Now it's going to ask for my username and password. I'll log in. At this point, I'm in my cPanel for my HostGator account. And you can see that um, there's all sorts of icons in here. At this point, I just need to create my MySQL database and a user that WordPress can use. So, out of all these things, we're going to use the MySQL databases. And what we're going to do is we're first we're going to create a database. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine Find My Elmo. Real easy. I'm just naming it the same as the site. You can name it whatever you want, just as long as it's something easy for you to remember. And then you click on Create Database. And you'll notice it was it was that simple. Um, it's already created the database. So I'm going to go back. And here is actually the database that I created. Now, you'll notice that it it appended this this information in front. Now, this is actually the name of my HostGator account. Um, and then it put in underscore. So we called it Find My Elmo, but the actual database name for this one is going to be MMRJK underscore Find My Elmo. Now just remember that this is going to be your account name and then an underscore. So you're going to want to make a note that this entire thing is your database name. The next thing we need to do is create a user that can access the database. So I'm going to do the exact same thing Find My Elmo. Now, um, at this point, you're going to need to create a password for that user. I would suggest creating a strong password, one that uses letters, numbers, and symbols. I'm, I'm going to create one here in just a minute for it, um, and then I'm going to paste it in there. So, you can see I'm just creating some random, random user password. Um, just something that, that it's hard to guess, um, and people would not... Uh, would not know. So we're going to say create user. And then it says it created it. I'm going to make a note of this 